Hello, and welcome back from spring break. I hope you had a great week off. Um, maybe you did something fun with your family. Maybe you read some more. Maybe you got caught up on missing assignments. I hope it was great for you. But are you ready to continue learning about life in ancient Greece? Well, we only have one more section left of the chapter, and that section starts on page 344. So turn to page 344. You there? 344? First, I want you to look at the picture at the bottom of the page of page 344, the bottom left. What a beautiful lighthouse, right? This lighthouse was in Alexandria, Egypt. Remember, Alexandria is this place that Alexander the Great named after himself when he was conquering the world and being so great, stuff like that. This lighthouse is one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, or seven wonders of the ancient world. The seven wonders of the ancient world are as following. The Great Pyramids of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Colossus of Rhodes, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, the Temple of Artemis, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, and the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus. Did you recognize some of those? I hope so. We've talked about the Hanging Gardens of Babylon and the Great Pyramids of Giza before in world history class. The Great Pyramids are the only ancient wonder that we can see today because the rest were destroyed, most by earthquakes or fires. All we have to remember them by are ruins, written accounts, pictures, and our imaginations, including this lighthouse. We don't see an actual picture of it. I can't send you to Google Earth to look at it, but we have an idea of what it might have looked like. And that would have been a very impressive lighthouse. Besides the lighthouse of Alexandria, Alexandria also contained the biggest library at the time. This great library was visited by many that wanted to grow in knowledge. Alexandria came to be known as the capital of knowledge and learning due to this library. It was built to protect all the progress that had been made in the fields of history, science, mathematics, medicine, and philosophy. And it was established by Ptolemy, one of um, Alexander's generals, not Ptolemy his son, but Ptolemy II, who was in charge of Egypt. Some of this library was destroyed in a fire um, as Rome came in and kind of took over. But the library, just in general, unfortunately declined over centuries until it eventually was all finally destroyed. But we're not just going to talk about libraries and lighthouses. We're going to talk about philosophy today, Greek philosophy. So while China had the first philosophers, the, world, the word philosophy is actually Greek in its root. It breaks down into two parts. Philo meaning love, just like we have the city Philadelphia, which is the city of brotherly love. It has that P-H-I-L. And Sophos, meaning wisdom. So Philo, love. Sophos, wisdom. Philosophy means love of wisdom. If you are a philosopher, it is your job to ask questions and spend your whole life trying to find the answers. And these are some deep questions. Some of them might be, what is the nature of the universe? What is a good life? What does it mean for something to be good? What is beautiful? How do we know what is real? How can we determine what is true? These are some pretty deep questions. They sound simple, but they can get pretty complicated. And the Greeks thought that they could answer these questions with reason. Reason is the power to think clearly. 
the Greeks reasoned through logic, a step-by-step -step method of thinking through a problem or question. You use logic a lot in math today when you work step-by-step -step through a problem, especially a word problem. But you can also use it in all subjects, including science and world history. You use it a lot in science experiments and in world history when you're connecting two thoughts together. Before we get into philosophers, we're going to take a, a break for a new segment of our program called Dutch Word of the Day. You see, I was looking at your homework and I thought to myself, I wonder if some of the students are just pressing that they watch the video, but don't actually do it. Or maybe they have the video going and they're just not focused. I don't know, how can I think of a way for them to watch it? So here's what I came up with. During these videos, at a certain random time, could be at the beginning, could be at the end, could be at the middle, I'm going to be going over a Dutch word of the day. You should write this word down because it will be involved in your homework somehow. What is the word for today? Well, I wanted to start with the basics. So I thought that I would teach you the word for I. Not I, but like I as in me. Like I do not want to eat pickles. In Dutch, instead of saying I, we say ik. I K. Ik. Can you say that for me? Ik. 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 Yeah, it's like you're saying that something is gross, like icky, but it's ik, and it means I. Okay, you have this word? Write that word down on a piece of paper and say that this was from Monday, World History, and remember it when it is time to do your homework. Back to ancient Greece. Ancient Greece had a lot of famous philosophers or people that worked with philosophy, love of wisdom. We already talked about Aristotle, Alexander the Great's tutor, but let's talk about Socrates first. Born in 470 BC in Athens, Socrates was a philosopher not known for his writing, but for his conversations. He, would, he actually didn't write anything. People wrote down what he said, but he never wrote down. He would go around having discussions and arguments and conversations with people in a specific way. He would ask question after question to force his listeners to think more clearly. This question and answer technique is called the Socratic method. And it's used in teaching sometimes today as well, where we ask questions and ask questions to get you to a point. While Socrates loved to get into discussions with people to change the way they thought, not everyone loved to get into conversations with Socrates. He embarrassed people by making them appear stupid or foolish. He made some enemies that way. He also spoke against the democratic government that most Athenians loved. Socrates was eventually charged with corrupting the youth and not believing in the same gods that the city did. He had a choice. Leave Greece, never come back, that's exile. Or stand trial in front of a jury. Socrates chose to go to trial and defend himself. We have a quote in our book that I'm going to read you. I have never set up as any man's teacher but if anyone, young or old, is eager to hear me, I never grudge him the opportunity. If any given one of these people becomes a good citizen or a bad one, I cannot, be fair, I cannot fairly be held responsible, saying, I didn't seek these people out. They sought me out. It's not my fault. I'm going to talk to them, but I'm not anyone's teacher. At this trial, he was convicted and despite being offered a way to escape jail, and he could have probably offered a not as severe penalty as the one he got, he didn't do that. And he was sentenced to death. 
and was executed by poison in 399 BC. Plato, a student of Socrates, recorded a lot of Socrates' conversations and ideas. He called these dialogues, what he written down, written down Socrates' conversations with him. Plato founded a school of philosophy called the Academy, a word that is associated with higher learning. Here, he stressed the importance of science, mathematics, and the nature of reality. Because of this, he became known as the maker of mathematicians. Plato's school of thought is still taught today. In fact, I studied Plato in my Foundations of Education class in college. We read a book called The Republic, which was written by him. Maybe some of your parents have also studied Plato. Um, another famous thing that a lot of people read is this allegory of a cave. Um, I wasn't the only person who learned from Plato. And we're not the only people that learn from Plato today. So we'd already discussed Plato's academy was where Aristotle spent some time learning. So Socrates taught Plato, who taught Aristotle. Socrates to Plato to Aristotle. During the time of the Greeks, a group called the Stoics also arose. This group was founded by Zeno and was originally named after him before they changed it to Stoics. They said that the divine reason governed the universe. People needed to live in harmony with nature and work on controlling their emotions as well. And that ends the first section on philosophy. Tomorrow, We'll be talking about history and politics at this time in ancient Greece, the Hellenistic period. If you want to work ahead on Thursday's assignment, we have covered questions 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. That's 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. Um, don't forget the Dutch word of the day to put it on your homework. You can answer that as well. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.